Mil Mogadi. Clearly, and Athanish, my question specifically relates to the waiving of intellectual property rights in respect of COVID-19 vaccines, given the uneven distribution. And I'm asking for an update on that um, process of the waiver of the rights and your engagement at European Union level and at World Trade Organization level. Uh, thanks, Chair, and I thank Deputy Colleague, Deputy Colleague and our, all the colleagues for putting on this question as well. Um, as we've outlined previously to both houses here, the universal and equitable access to safe, effective and affordable vaccines, diagnostics and treatments is crucial in the global fight against COVID-19. And this is very much at the heart of the Irish Government's international response to the pandemic, and governments in the developed world must do more to ensure this happens. As a member of the EU, we fully engaged in the overall EU response relating to the TRIPS waiver. The EU is of the view that there is no single solution and that a multi-pronged approach is needed and that discussions should concentrate on how the intellectual property system can contribute to towards increasing manufacturing capacity and the equitable access to the vaccines around the world. Since last autumn, the EU has participated in the informal discussions on the intellectual property element of the WTO response to the COVID-19 pandemic with representatives of South Africa, India and the US, known as the Quad Group. These discussions have been detailed and protracted and a potential compromise proposal has now emerged that it offers the most promising path towards achieving a meaningful outcome. The EU believes that the compromise proposal addresses the concerns of South Africa and developing countries as regards the possibilities to authorise the manufacturers to produce COVID-19 vaccines without the consent of patent owners. It also streamlines procedures to facilitate faster production of vaccines, while at the same time maintaining a functioning and intellectual property framework necessary for the development of new vaccines and medicines. Since we last engaged in this matter, the proposal has now, rep has now been presented to the full WTO membership for consideration and agreement will require the consensus of all WTO members. Ireland, Ireland will continue to engage constructively with the European Commission and other EU member states on the EU position on the compromise proposal in order to reach agreement as soon as possible. Global production of COVID-19 vaccines has substantially increased with production expected to reach 18 to 19 billion by mid-2022. This means that by, by mid of this year, uh, we will have sufficient vaccines for everybody in the world, including for booster campaigns. Vaccine supply currently exceeds demand uh, as it stands. As vaccine production is no, is no longer the main issue of concern, the international community is now focused on the need to rapidly build capacity in low-income countries for healthcare workers, cold chain logistics, information sharing, so that demand for vaccines uh, in, will increase in line with supply and vaccines can be safely administered on the scale needed to meet the WHO uh, Health Organization's 70% vaccination target. The EU is committed to the equitable distribution of COVID-19 vaccines, with a focus on supporting Africa, where vaccination rates are lower than in other parts of the world. The EU has led the way in global solidarity as the world's largest exporter of COVID-19 vaccines, with over 2.1 billion finished doses exported to 166 countries by March of this year, with over 4 billion committed in financial support to COVAX from all the EU members. The Irish Government has to date committed to the donation of 13.5 million um, and 5 million, uh, vaccine to the COVAX, so 5 million vaccines to the COVAX facility. Uh, already they've been delivered to uh, countries including Uganda, Nigeria, Indonesia, Ghana and Boraka Faso, with other deliveries expected to follow shortly. Thank you, Minister, for your reply. And the clearest sentence is the first sentence, that we believe in universal and equitable access to safe, effective and affordable vaccines, etc. Clearly, that's, I agree with you completely, but that's not what's happening. What has happened here, as Europe has led the way in a market approach to the production of vaccines, to the distribution of vaccines, meaning that we're now left with the companies making a huge profit and a totally, totally inequitable system. Uh, vaccine inequity persists, according to Oxfam. 13% of people in low income in industries have owned 13% have received two doses compared with 75% of people in high income. Less than 1% of people in low income countries are boosted compared with over 60% in Ireland. The figures speak for themselves. Also the figures of public funding, up to 97% gone into AstraZeneca for research and development. We're unclear what other public funds have gone into the other companies to help them have massive profits. So the sentence in the beginning hasn't been followed through. Uh, guys, I, I wasn't at that committee, so I, I would be happy to read back over the, the submissions on that. I didn't, haven't had a chance uh, just to, to, to get a sense of what's been put forward there. But a lot of the debate uh, around this, even since we had these debates in the houses here uh, and back in the channel as well, was focusing on, on the supply and that the supply was the issue. 
uh, where the EU always took the position that that wouldn't necessarily be the issue, that it wasn't just the solution. There's a, there's a, lot, of, a lot of other parts of this too, the, the capacity of those countries to be able to administer the vaccine uh, on the ground uh, and the demand for that as well. Uh, so this, it's quite clear now that the supply is not the issue and the EU were right on that. Uh, you will all disagree, of course, I, I accept that, but the facts are there for themselves, that the, that the supply of the vaccines are up to a level that they're needed. Um, there is compromise proposals being put forward now the WTO, and it's not just Europe. This is a w, WTO. It's, it, it's not just, Europe are one player on that as well. Uh, and, I, and I will say it repeatedly, Europe has laid out on this in relation to distribution and the export. Uh, I think others might have to question themselves on that as well, outside of the EU, but the, ex, the EU has played their part uh, in relation to that as well. Um, so I think I the compromise text I think we, we think will be beneficial and will help with that, and it, it is a compromise, and it's been worked on since last autumn. Uh, the Irish government supports that as well. Uh, it's now informally in those trade talks, and I believe there's a, I think there's a meeting scheduled, if I'm correct, um, for the end of this month or early, early June to try to bring this to a formal decision as well, which I think, which I think will be positive. Um, but I do think we have to continue to support not just the access uh, to, the, to, the, to the manufacturing and the, and, the, and, the, and the production of it, but also to the, the, the investment in the systems in these countries to be able to administer the vaccine as well. Healthcare workers, logistics, the information sharing, the demand for the vaccines, all that's part of that as well. So I don't agree uh, that the EU uh, have, have held this back. Uh, they're part of the World Trade Talks and that's, that's what they're part of as well. Um, but we are, though, as an Irish government, and we said this in the Shannon in motion, where we didn't oppose, I think there was agreement there, of everyone's intention here. But there's more than one way to achieve this. Uh, and the, the discussion that I've heard has always focused on that the supply was the issue, when clearly it's not necessarily the supply. In relation to the investment of public money, uh, and a lot of the work that's happening at, at, at our level, and European level, is also to try to recognise the importance of giving access and greater access to the vaccines, but also to protect our IP regime, not just for now, but for the future as well. Because we talk about the, the public money that was invested in bringing forward these vaccines quickly. And I, well, I've always acknowledged that, massive public investment all over the world. But that also was, was combined with massive private investment for many years before that, because the vaccine that has been used has, has been a combination of new research, but also a lot of investment uh, and, and, and development over many, many, many years as well. And we want to continue with that investment. I know members in this house, I've had debates here before many years ago in relation to the investment in R&D and research and development, and as a few in this house believe that should all, should all be done by public money. Um, but that does not get, get us the best results. Uh, it doesn't lead to the best development of all the, all the potential medical interventions and solutions and drugs and so on. You need the blend and combination of both private and public money to, to achieve a much greater impact. But that's not acknowledged by, by some contributors here, and I accept that. We would, we would differ. Much. It's important that we have a right model that encourages private investment as well as uh, the public investment to get the best products uh, developed for, for people. Deputy Conley. Minister, two years more uh, later than a pandemic was declared. We have a totally inequitable system on the ground in relation to vaccines. What the EU Commission has done has led a system that has benefited the profiteering by private companies with public money and a total indemnity against any, ev any possible cause of action against them in relation to trial vaccines. That's what we have done here, public investment. And then we have blamed the other countries and said they hadn't the capacity when that was illustrated to be totally false. And now we're going down the road of a supposed compromise, which clearly the committee, when they heard the evidence recently, pointed out is not the way to go. And it, uh, Professor Ashling McMahon has been uh, highlighted. And indeed, I don't have the time to go through what she's highlighted. But believe me, Minister, you should read it. And I am not accepting this model of a profiteering on pro public money for the benefit of companies when the approach you, should be what happened in relation to AIDS and the generic production you, of essential vaccines.